afternoon. It's wonderful that you're all here to join as we remember Lee Pressman. <clears throat> My name is Cantor Laurel Barr. On behalf of the family, I want to first of all ask you to please silence your cell phones and also to remind you that the family will be receiving friends today until 7 p.m. and tomorrow from 1 to 4 and 6 to 8 at Kelly and Brad's home, which is located at 35630 South Huntington in Solon. They asked for donations to be sent to the Pancreatic Cancer Network or pan, pancan.org. And with that, we'll begin. I lift my voice when all is dark. Into God's hands I place my heart. I'm not afraid, Adonai. I lift my eyes when all is night. When I need help, I seek God's light. Lo roi, I'm not afraid, Adonai li. Piado of Kiruchi, I'm not afraid, Adonai li. Shiviti Adonai le negdi tamid, ki mimini bal emot, I have set the eternal always before me, God is at my side. I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure, for you will not abandon me to death nor let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy. Enduring happiness is your gift. Death has taken our beloved Lee Pressman. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Lee's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever. For his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of his heart and his mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. The 23rd Psalm. Adonai roi lo echsar, vino de shehi arbitseni, almei menuchot yena haleni, nafshi yishovev yanecheni, v'magle tzedek lemaan shemo. Gam ki elech pegeitz al mavet lo irara ki ata imadi shivtecha umishantecha hema yenacha muni taaroch lefana shulchan neged tzorai dishan tavashemen roshi kosir vaya. Achtov var chaser yir defuni kol yemei chayai v'shavti bevet Adonai le'orech yamin. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of our rabbinic sages asked his students, What is a good way for a man to live his life? 
One of the students answered, to have an ayin tova, a good eye. Another said, to be a chaver tov, a good friend. And a third student, Rabbi Elazar replied, to have a lev tov, a good heart. The teacher then said, I prefer Rabbi Elazar's answer, for those who have a good heart also possess all the other qualities. Lee Pressman had an eye in Tova. He had a good eye, for he was able to look at life and at people and see the good. Lee was a chaver tov, a good neighbor and a good friend. He was fun to be with. He had a good sense of humor and a gentle, cheerful, kind way about him. But above all, and basic to all else, he had a lev tov, a good heart. He was a warm, sincere, and generous human being who put everybody else's welfare above his own. He devoted his life to his family, to Joe Ellen, his beloved wife of 55 years, who due to illness is unable to be here with us today. But those who knew him most intimately, his children, Kelly and Brad, Michael and Shelley, his brother Edward and his brother Donald of blessed memory, and his treasured grandchildren, Mallory and Jordan, Chad and Courtney and Carly. They're all here to remember. They're here to share their memories and to mourn. And we join with you in your grief. Dr. Lee Pressman was born in 1932 here in Cleveland, and he spent his entire life in this city that he loved. He graduated from Cleveland Heights High School, captain of his football team, served as a lieutenant in the Air Force, and soon after met and married the girl of his dreams, Jo Ellen Katz, long before J-Date and eHarmony, or even Match.com. They met the old-fashioned way at a JCC dance. With a smile that Kelly said made his eyes sparkle, it must have been love at first sight, for he and Jo Ellen were absolutely inseparable from the moment they were a couple until his very last day on this earth. During those 55 years, he sat and waited patiently at her weekly beauty shop appointment, ate a cornflake breakfast across from her each and every day. And even in this final week of his life, he shared his last hours with Jo Ellen in her hospice room, enjoying ice cream together, hers, of course, heaped with hot fudge. Lee cared for her with such great compassion and love throughout his life, not needing much more than her daily companionship. Lee was a dentist, a very prestigious profession, but never seemed to care about acquiring possessions or things, nor was he lured by monetary wealth. Instead, he put his passion into his family, health, and education, and making a life of mitzvot and meaning. He loved his sports. Lee was a tennis player. I heard many of you mention that you were playing with him at times. He was at Mill Creek and at the Racquet Club East. He enjoyed Oberlin tennis camp and was often found with his ball machine, practicing lobs over at the Beechwood courts. He was a marathon runner, having participated in over 40 marathons in Cleveland, the Revco and Rite Aid and CVS events, and even this year, he participated in the marathon. He was quite the health nut when it came to running, but when it came to eating, not so much. While he loved tomatoes and ate them whole like an apple, he truly enjoyed eating out in restaurants, getting a doggy bag with leftovers whenever possible, and never said no to a well-marbled steak or a juicy cheeseburger prepared by his son-in-law, Brad. Shelley recalled packing him to-go containers filled with her homemade salmon patties and peas. Lee always made it his business to care for the less privileged, to step in when he encountered a bully, and to give without expecting anything in return. With his mother-in-law as his office manager, he would often treat his dental patients without a copay, and frequently and conveniently forgot to ask for their insurance card. But with all that Lee did to care for and provide for his wife and his children throughout his life, Nothing could compare to the love he had for his grandchildren. He adored babysitting them, 
though he wasn't terribly good at it. And the kids usually came home with a diaper that was on backwards, and they often needed a bath, ASAP. But those kids were his life and his loves, and they will share some special memories in a moment. For Lee Pressman, life was like a vast banquet, where he tried to squeeze as much pleasure from it as he could. In Judaism, we understand that life that has been well lived is deeply meaningful. For those like Lee who have lived fully, death is not to be looked upon with fear, but rather to be accepted with equanimity, coming as the natural close of a long and good life. He is now at rest, but his passing does not mark the end, for he has left behind a precious trove of memories and a legacy that will continue to influence and guide us throughout our lives. Amen. I'd like to call on Brad to share a few words. First of all, our family would like to thank you all for being here with us. As I started drafting this letter or speech, I realized how fortunate and grateful I was or am to be and had the opportunity to have been Lee's son, son-in-law. Lee was the kindest man I'd ever met and will probably ever meet. In my 25 plus years of knowing, I hope I have that number wrong, my wife's going to kill me. I never heard him say a bad or negative thing about anybody, ever, unless you were in the medical profession. Then he may have had a bad thing to say. And that's an inside joke. Even people that took advantage of him, stole from him, instead of getting angry, he would feel bad because he thought he had something that they needed so desperately. And that's why they did what they did. I recall an event years ago when he caught one of his employees stealing money from him. Instead of getting angry or lashing out, he cried because he felt bad that this person was so desperate. That was the kind of man he was generous and unselfish to a fault. He was a true giver. He gave until there was nothing left to give. We had conviction and he was a very determined individual. How else would he have been able to finish all those marathons every year in any weather and he always finished. Over the last few weeks, I had the opportunity to spend some extended time with Lee, helping Kelly take care of him while she was also taking care of her mom. We would often take Lee back and forth to the hospital, to doctor's appointments, and we had quality time in the car talking back and forth just about things. Looking back now, I recognize each day he was getting just a little more tired. I think once the doctors told him he was no longer able to run, and in conjunction with the fact that his dear beloved wife Joellen's health was rapidly declining, it had a greater effect on him than we recognized. After all, two of the three things, us kids being the third, were being taken away from him. The rug was pulled out from underneath his feet. It was more than his conviction and his determination would allow him to handle. In closing, a word that kept coming to mind as I was drafting this was fortunate. We were all so fortunate to have we in our lives, us kids and grandchildren, know how much Dad, Papa loved us. And to have that, especially at a time like this, is a cherished gift that will last forever. In the last few days, he kept mentioning how proud he was of Kelly and how strong she was that she was able to take such good care of him and Joellen and that he never realized what, what a strong person she was. 
He was truly grateful. We will miss you, and I only hope they have lots of ripe tomatoes for you in heaven that you can feast on after you get done running those marathons. Sleep well. We read from Ecclesiastes at a time like this. It says, For everything there is a season in time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And surely when we met yesterday and shared all these wonderful stories, there was a lot of joy, there was a lot of sadness all mixed in. The grandkids that were able to be here shared some wonderful stories with me. And to represent the grandchildren, I think it's going to be Chad and Mallory coming up to share some wonderful memories with you. And Courtney, oh, all the kids are coming. Courtney, Carly, and Jordan. I'm gonna move the microphone up. It's hard to put into words years worth of amazing memories with our papa, and, but we sure will try to. All five of us grandkids were lucky enough to be able to spend and cherish many years of our lives with the kindest soul of a grandfather anyone could have. We all sat down yesterday talking about all of our favorite moments and memories that came to mind when we thought about him and decided we would really like to share them with you all today. Me being oldest, and first grandchild, I always had a special bond with my papa. My mom told me that every time she would pick me up after having them babysit, I had my diaper on backwards or two legs through one hole. <laughs> when he was watching us, I remember one time I got so upset because he wouldn't let me have my fourth fudge popsicle. I went outside and would throw the basketball against the brick wall because I was so angry, and I ended up throwing it straight into the front glass door, shattering the entire thing. I knew for sure he was going to be so mad, but I'll never forget the way he reacted. <clears throat> Thinking I was going to be punished, I immediately apologized, and he said it was okay. He gave me a hug and gave me that fourth fudge pop school, which we all know I did not need. <sighs> he was always the kindest and sweetest human. He was loving and caring in the most genuine way possible. <laughs> Every morning, he used to get Jordan off the bus at Hilltop Elementary School and wave to her through the window while he would run laps around the parking lot. <laughs> for those who didn't know, my papa had a passion for running. He would wake up every morning at 4 a.m., rain, shine, snow, whatever the weather, and run miles up and down the road through the mall parking lot and even had his own personal key to the Beachwood Gymnasium. All the police knew him, knew who he was, because they'd have to tell him he couldn't run down the middle of the road. <laughs> After his runs, he would get ready to go to work and head out on his way to the office to go fix teeth. Every time Jordan would come back from getting her teeth clean and fixed, she said he would forget to use the Novocaine <laughs> and felt everything he was doing. Telling him after the fact that he forgot, he just giggled and said, oops. <laughs> from his family, to his work, to his friends, to his hobbies, my papa always made the most out of every moment and seized every day. <coughs> While driving home from the hospital the other day, the song Five More Minutes came on the radio. In that moment, Jordan and I both started to tear up, thinking about all the moments we had spent and all the moments we wish we had more of. As cliche and corny as it might sound, for those who don't know the song lyrics, they go, 
Time rolls by and the clock doesn't stop. We wish we had a few more drops of the good stuff and the good times, but they just keep on flying right on by. Like it isn't nothing. We wish we had a pause button because moments like those, Lord knows I'd hit it. Yes, sometimes this old life will leave you wishing that you had five more minutes. Although we had some amazing times with our Papa, we all always will be left wishing we had just a few more. We miss you, Papa. And we know that you are in a better place now and can eat all the tomatoes you want and run as many miles as you want. We love you. I encourage you when you meet with the family, when you see them at the house, that you'll share your memories and you will hear these incredible stories. Unfortunately, um, when pain and grief is so strong, it's impossible for some, and that's why they need to be quiet at this time. Um, I do want to share one story that you mentioned with, to me yesterday that I was saving for the grandchildren to tell, but there's a picture in his office of a German shepherd in the dental chair and they, f right? And um, it turns out that this dog had been injured and he was hit in the face with a brick and he actually prepared his teeth. <laughs> I don't know if he used Novocaine, but <laughs> might be a good idea on the shepherd. But uh, he kept that picture in his office always. He was very happy to say that he had repaired the teeth of a dog. Okay. I ask you to join me as we say, we will remember him together. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys that we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too shall live, for Lee is a part of us as we remember him. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem, Adonai Mevorach, God has given and now God has taken. Blessed be the name of God. I ask all who are able to please rise for El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, Shochen Bam Ramim, Hametse Minuchanechona. Tachat kan fashrina im kedoshimu tehorim kezo harakia mazirim et nishma tayakar shalach le olamo bala rahamim yasti rehu beseta kanafav Ritzro, bitzro, hachaim et nishmato, Adonai hu nachalato, Vianuach beshalom al mishkavo, Venomar, Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Lee Pressman, son of Hyman and Rose Pressman, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and let us all say, Amen. You may be seated. This concludes the service here in the chapel, and it will continue at Beit Olam Cemetery.